with all these ESOs uh, plus uh, the very latest in sports and uh, international news and business and entertainment coming up in the hour. Now, the Supreme Court, by a majority decision, has dismissed a suit challenging Martin Amidu's age as special prosecutor. Reasons for the 5-2 decision, according to the Chief Justice, would be made available at the registry of the Supreme Court. The majority who voted for the dismissal of the suit are Enimi Yabua, Paul Bafo Boni, Samuel Marfo Sao, uh, Nene Amegache, and Professor Ni Ashi Kote. This was against the two minority, Sule Badegbe and Agnes Doji, who agreed with Dominic Ayene that the age of Martin Amidu does not qualify him to handle the position of special prosecutor. Former Deputy Attorney General under the previous John Mahama administration filed the action at the Supreme Court challenging that Mr. Amidu's age did not qualify him to be appointed as Ghana's first special prosecutor. Right, uh, to other stories, the Ghana Maritime Authority is in collaboration, in collaboration with the Marine Police and Western Naval Command has arrested eight persons suspected to be engaged in illegal bunkering. The eight are being held at the office of the Marine Police in Takradi while their wooding uh, boats with the oil is at the Second D Naval Base. Uh, let's quickly go live to Second D Naval Base where my colleague Eric Yawaje is standing by with other details of the arrest. Eight persons suspected to be engaged in illegal oil bunkering. Now, the dinghy you see there is what was used for that escapade. We are told that these eight persons are currently being held at the office of the Ghana Marine Police. I have with me the, the commander for Marine Police and also the regional director for the Ghana Maritime Authority and I want them to give us further details about the arrest. Oh, okay, good afternoon. Welcome to Media Live on TV3. Good afternoon. Okay, so tell us more about the arrest that you've made. Yeah, this morning whilst the joint Ghana Navy, Ghana Marine Police, and Ghana Maritime Authority officers were on night uh, uh, patrol on, at the anchorage at Takurade. Just when they were about to wind up, they intercepted eight people on board this uh, in local palancia called Dende and fully loaded London with uh, oil. So they arrested them, and we instructed that they bring it to the naval base, and then the suspects to our cells at the main uh, harbor station. So for those who are not really familiar with oil bunkering, if you say oil bunkering, what are you referring to? Yeah, oil bunkering is a process where, uh, uh, I mean, oil is taken from a ship. And under normal circumstances, it's supposed to be brought to the harbor and discharged through the appropriate channels. The GRA will come in and assess the necessary customs duties that are to be paid. But this one is illegal, so they do it under the cover of darkness. They take this boat into the waters and illegally transfer it okay. and bring it on to some of the London beaches and illegally transfer it into tankers, which they... ...collect the Ghana uh, Maritime Authority, the Western Navy, and the Marine Police. We have a collaborative all night patrol. Um, like I said, this would have taken place deep in the night. But because of our all night patrols, now they are adopting uh, a more smarter strategy. Just when we are winding up and leaving is when they do this. Fortunately, um, we stayed a little longer and then we, we got them this morning. 
These people that you've arrested, are they all Ghanaians or they are from other foreign nationals? Oh, they, are, they are all Ghanaians. They are all Ghanaians. Uh, they, they may be indigenous of uh, that township along the coast. Okay. And their ages, if you know? Uh, for now, we are, we are still doing the investigation, so they are aged, but they are mostly youth. Yeah, not very old people are in, uh, among them. Maybe, perhaps, the owners who could be much older are sitting at shore waiting for them. Okay. What have they been telling you? Have you begun investigations and what have you been picking so far? Some will claim they have gone to exchange some products, some things for the oil. That's normally what they claim. But even whether exchange or not exchange, it is an illegal activity. So therefore, the law must take its course. And what will happen to them now? They are currently under investigation. We are building our docket and we will be prosecuting them. At the same time, too, we are handing over the oil to the appropriate national agencies. It is a smuggled one, so GRE will come in. It is also, uh, and uh, we also have to think about the quality of it, so MPA will also come in. Uh, Captain, is this the first arrest you've made in this month or beginning of this year? No, we have, we have made several. Um, um, it is something that was frequently being done and it was a matter of serious concern to us. And that's one of the reasons why we started these all-night patrols. And one concern also is the pollution that it causes. Right now, if you look on the water, you find a thin sheen of oil on the water. If, if it rains, it happens to rain now and then the product is in there, the water will settle down and then all the oil will flow. So uh, we are getting the uh, appropriate agencies to uh, get the product out as soon as possible. If you go to the New Takradi beach now, you see how oil is soaked all around and that is not good for our environment and that is why uh, we're trying to stop uh, this thing from happening. The other thing is these boats are not registered. Uh, nobody supervised the building of the boats and um, it's, it's very difficult to track them. Today it is oil, tomorrow it is another thing. So um, that is why we came together and then we, we, we purposed that we were going to take the necessary steps to stop this thing from happening. Thank you very much. So by, that, by, that, this, by this exercise too, they are denying the state the needed revenue. The government needs every penny, every cent to help develop Mother Ghana. So people should not try to take the back door to make money without accountability. So therefore, that's why we are all undertaking this exercise. Thank you very much. So we came to you live from the Sekedi Naval Base where the Ghana Maritime Authority, together with other allied agencies, have arrested a dinghy full of illegal oil men to be sold on the Ghana market. Eric Yeroje, TV3 News, Takradi. And here in Accra, I'm Stephen Enti. Now, virologist Dr. Sebastian Eugene Arthur has urged government to place restrictions on movement of persons within the Obwasi Township in the Ashanti region. This follows the increasing numbers of coronavirus cases in that part of the country. Obwasi recorded an alarming jump in COVID-19 cases with 272 new infections. The reason for the high numbers in the Ashanti region, which has so far uh, recorded some 600 and 67. Let's quickly get to the telephone lines and speak with uh, Dr. Uh, Eugene Arthur, who joins us now. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your time. I want us to look at the number 272 as against the total number of infections within the Ashanti region itself. I want to find out from you whether you think these are sufficient grounds to uh, like have a total lockdown of Abwasi. Yeah, um, good afternoon to your viewers and um, the good job you're doing. So basically, I think uh, looking at what is happening right now, I am looking at it retro uh, retrospectively with what has happened previously with Accra and um, Kumase in general. We had a lockdown which did not really affect Obwase. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I think was a bit disturbing um, because when you have a lockdown of a place which has some few issues, it's better to, uh, to actually help you get the cases that are hidden because you are dealing with a virus that has to be more of asymptomatic um, in people when they get them. So if people are spreading it, you can't really directly tell if the spreading is going on or not. And that is why I call for a total lockdown 
for um, Obuase as at this moment. This is not necessarily because of any uh, uh, thing to do with yeah. people who have uh, uh, poverty issues or people who are struggling with finances. This is just to help the healthcare professionals to get ahead of the um, epidemic or to say endemic issue right there. Because now we have asymptomatic individuals who are dominating the number of cases we have in Ghana. So if the case is the same for Obwase, it means that we even have more people who have not been detected yet. Remember, most of the cases we are recording are through enhanced um, contact tracing. It's not as a result of people reporting to the hospital. This will tell us that maybe we've not even picked the majority of the people who have the disease yet. And they are out there, you know, and they'll be spreading. Some will be traveling to other regions. So to me, it is best that we lock um, Obwase down, even if for a week or some days. That would be best, better to help the contact tracing to be effective. Then we can pick every individual, or at least most of the people who are um, infected. Then we can get ahead of the outbreak right there in Obwase. Right, uh, Dr. Arthur, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Eugene Arthur, AS Virologist. Uh, let's now uh, go to uh, Ashanti region where our correspondent, William Evans Incom, is also uh, joining us uh, with some further details. He's joining us on Skype. So, Ms. Enkum, good afternoon and thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, mm. I know that since we spoke to you on Tuesday, uh, there were all sorts of uh, concerns about the rise in numbers of the Obwasi cases. You did indicate to me that there is the likelihood, according to your sources, that we could get uh, a spike of over 600. I want to find out from you, since we spoke to you, whether anything has changed in terms terms of the numbers and what your sources tell you? Well, so, uh, yes, of course, we are still expecting the Ghana Health Service to um, come out and confirm. They are still not yet updated. Um, it's as far as development of cases in Obwasi is concerned. But, Stephen, there is a worrying trend, and that has to do with movement. Now, people are anticipating, and I'm talking about people, uh, some people living in Obwase, they are anticipating a possible lockdown. So they are, they are, they are not moving from Obwase, and that is quite worrying, because as I'm speaking to you now, out of the 20 administrative districts that have recorded COVID-19 cases, places like Amansa Central hasn't recorded a case yet, and Amansa Central is just very close to Obwase, the only place that is very close to Obwase that has recorded a case is Amansia uh, East, or if you like, the five municipality. That place has recorded a case, but Amansia Central is yet to record a case. Amansia West is yet to record a case. Even Adanse, Adanse, Adanse as far has recorded a case. Uh, we are yet to get here of any new case in Akrofon District. But these are People that are very close to Obwase, and people are moving out because they, they, they are anticipating a possible lockdown. And that is why, because if you come to Kumase, uh, there's one will say an easy calm within, right. within in the sense that now people fear that there is likely to be an exodus of people moving from, or there's likely to be an exodus between Obwase and Kumase corridor. Mm. And that will mean another spread, a possible spread as far as cases in the Kumasi Metro is concerned. Now, Right, uh, William Evans in Kumbu. We'll be getting back to him. Uh, the connection has failed us a little bit, uh, but we'll take uh, we'll, we'll move to the, the same region, really, where the regional health director in Ashanti region uh, is reinforcing the team of health personnel in Obwasi to facilitate contact tracing, testing, and treatment of COVID-19. This follows the increasing uh, number of cases in the region. Obwasi is the latest hotspot with over 400 cases out of the 662 confirmed COVID-19 cases in Ashanti region. The rising number is a cause of worry to residents. <laughs> At least I'm to me a street, a travel, but yes, sir. 
Number no, a dead jumpy pair. Don't shame me, I told TV3 the alarming situation calls for the strengthening of the medical team for contact tracing. The medical team will have to be strengthened. So it means that we have to send more teams and make sure that we identify, isolate, and then those that will need treatment, we treat. So formerly it was only the medical team at Obwazi that was working, but this time the region has come in and has given the reinforcement. Dr. Tinkran has also asked residents to abide by protocols to prevent the further spread of the virus. You only need one person to spread the infection. And that is the emphasis of our risk communication. Because uh, sometimes we shouldn't take things for granted. You don't know any person that you come across and you don't observe the protocols, the social distancing, the wearing of face masks may give you the infection. And this person can spread the infection over and over. Ghana has currently recorded 5,127 cases with 495 recoveries and 22 deaths. Now, government has set up a national early warning system task force to identify diseases such as COVID-19 and also deal with threats of violence. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who launched the task force, charged them to double their efforts in dealing with any possible outbreak. The National Early Warning System Task Force is a follow-up of the decision by ECOWAS to set up the system. Already, countries such as Burkina Faso, Benin and other ECOWAS member states have put in place the system. In the case of Ghana, the system is expected to assist government to detect threats of violence. The task force will also check environmental loss of lives and diseases such as the coronavirus. Vice President Dr. Mohamed Baumia, who launched the task force, charged them to double their efforts in detecting problems. Maximum cooperation to get Ghana ready for the assessment and the launch. On its part, the ECOWAS Commission will provide support and logistics to fully equip the center once established. I call on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration for its maximum support for the work of the task force. He again asked members to be circumspect in their operations. The center's role is to warn government of threats to human security, propose appropriate action, coordinate and ensure monitoring of the implementation of response to the warning. Institutions such as the Foreign Affairs Ministry, Interior and Finance Ministries are members of the task force. And the Ghana Immigration Service has deported five Burkina Bays for illegal entry into Ghana. The five were spotted by immigration personnel at an unapproved route bordering a neighboring Burkina Faso on Tuesday, May 12th. The all-male Echoes nationals, whose ages range between 15 and 34, were screened by Port Health personnel and handed over to the Burkina Faso authorities. The Regional Public Affairs Officer of the Ghana Immigration Service, Yusif uh, Durana Abdul Mumin, uh, said the five were heading towards Kumasi for farming and trading activities. They bring the total number of deported Burkina Bays to 150 since the closure of the border in April as part of efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 in the country. And despite directives for the public to wear nose masks and observe social distancing, most residents of Bwamai in the Ifijakwa Bread North District of Ashanti region are not complying. Correspondent Ibrahim Abubakar visited the community and has come through with the following report. 
here at Buamai in the Efijakwa North District. Most of the people here are not wearing their nose masks as they come into the towns. I've seen some few people though who have their nose masks on. Also, the social distancing protocol is virtually absent here. Let me briefly engage with some of the residents and find out from them why they are not wearing these nose masks and also why they are not observing these social distancing protocols. I don't think I'm a monster max in nose mask. How did you say that? Oh, can I be more? Be more shy, dear. Be more shy. So be our move, cook, cook, move, 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 move. At this, I buy no say force. I engineer, I say be a. And can I buy with my bonhom more than I? What about chebi? I'm a na. You are new. My be your papa chebi. At this, I can only think I buy with chebi. My dear, any or any force. Me me pay no man. She has a police in him. Me na. On me ye bibisa. I say me me who say. Because I buy a and I see and and a mindset. Said I make I go to I and but yes, you be a sir. But Bibi is a Sabia, Motichet, and you may sanitize and no Bibia, no Batian, you may be. Even though they are aware of the existence of the virus, they are not wearing the face masks or nose masks because they claim they are waiting for government to provide one for them. But let's find out from the district assembly what measures they are also putting in place to ensure that they contain the spread. Of the virus in this area. As for the nose mark, uh, we've seen that most of the people are farmers, and uh, the effort for farmers, if you say they should put on the mask, they say it's a problem. And uh, somebody has seen that it is a problem. So I think yesterday or so, we bought as many as thousand two and shared to the taxi drivers and other people. I'm happy that. Uh, we haven't recorded anything here. I'm, I'm trying, we are trying as assembly to do as much as we can so that we don't record anything there. Ibrahim Abubakar, TV3, Buamai. And uh, we still have some more stories. This is still midday live from our news hub at, at the Sawe Kanda in Accra. Now, the Australian High Commissioner to Ghana, Andrew Barnes, has commended government and the people of Ghana for their response in combating uh, COVID-19. The High Commissioner indicated in their interim, the facility will serve as an isolation centre for staff who would be infected in the line of duty. Sibinewa Otu has more. Infrastructure has been one of the major challenges of the Accra Psychiatric Hospital over the years. In finding solution to this, management had sought support from government, corporate and individuals to come to their aid to refurbish wards in order to give befitting care to people who need their services. Medical director of the facility, Dr. Pinamana Paul said, it was all joy when management was approached by the Mental Health and Wellbeing Foundation to refurbish the VIP ward. This place, as you know, was the VIP. Unfortunately, the facilities in here, the free infrastructure, did not give meaning to the name VIP. And therefore, when people were brought here um, to be in VIP, it was quite disheartening. So when the opportunity came for us to um, be able to refurbish here, we, we jumped at it. Um, if you remember, this place used to be a whole dormitory together. When we went around, you found that we now have single rooms and these single rooms would afford patients to have more privacy. Country Director of the Mental Health and Wellbeing Foundation, Gina Teddy, indicated the facelift would improve the quality of care and urged management to put the VIP ward into good use to serve its intended purpose. The main values are to support the wellness and, and people's wellness, especially people with some mental health challenges. 
So we, 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 we actually realized that the Aka Psychiatric Hospital needs some kind of support and support patients in a way that protects their dignity and support their wellness so they don't feel that they are in a hospital. When you are here, you feel like you are in a home and that's the essence of what we did. And I think the essence is that we hope and pray that this will be maintained. The Australian High Commissioner to Ghana, who commissioned the facility, bemoaned lack of support given mental health care in the country. Uh, mental health uh, is a priority for the Australian government and we recognise that it's an area that often doesn't get a lot of support from government or from people. And uh, so we're very pleased to be able to step up and make a small difference here. He expressed delight about Ghana's handling of COVID-19, adding the facility would also help in the COVID fight. Wards may be used for uh, isolation for uh, staff at the hospital here who need to be isolated uh, and so we're very pleased to be able to contribute. This also contributes to uh, the, the, uh, the fight against the COVID crisis. And the newly refurbished VIP has four wards, a dining area, a conference and washrooms. When fully operational, the facility would render upgraded services and afford inmates privacy. And Ghana's High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, Papa Ousu Ankoma, uh, considers himself blessed having recovered from the deadly pandemic uh, coronavirus. Uh, Papa Ousu Ankoma, on Tuesday, May 12, 2020, issued a press release to announce his recovery. The former Attorney General under Kufo's administration tested positive for COVID-19 last month with reports suggesting that he was receiving treatment in an intensive care unit at the Royal Free Hospital, London. The High Commissioner later issued a statement on April 15 to confirm his ailment and said the High Commissioner was in stable condition. He was grateful to all who contributed in diverse ways to support him during those challenging times. And the Health Services Workers Union says it will push government to ensure adequate stimulus packages are made available to its members nationwide. The union, which has about 27,000 members nationwide, argues the package will improve the confidence of its members to work effectively in dealing with COVID-19. Discussions are still ongoing about adequate stimulus packages for frontline health workers. According to the Health Services Workers Union, the package should be made available to all health workers. Government is here to agree with the proposal three months after detecting COVID-19 in the country. General Secretary of the Health Services Workers Union, Reynolds of Osutenkrai, says the union will push government to provide adequate packages for members. Two of our members at Begro Hospital have been infected with the virus, though they are not within the so-called frontliners group. So everybody is a frontliner within the health sector. Come out to say these are the frontliners. So we are pursuing it to ensure that all health workers qualify to be frontliners and whatever uh, is they are entitled to is given to them. In a related development, the union has procured over 10,000 nose masks and hand sanitizers for members nationwide. The items worth over 150,000 cities is to complement government's efforts in dealing with the COVID-19. It is our hope that they will use it for uh, as, as they go to work and wherever they are, they will use it so that they will not get the virus because the union strength is in the membership. Welcome back uh, uh, to the business segment on Midday Live. Now, the uh, Ghana Tourism Authority has issued directives for the hospitality se uh, sector. 
uh, which is effective May 11 uh, to May 31, 2020. And I'll quickly run through the statement issued uh, by the Tourism Authority. It says that following the President's address to the nation on Sunday, 10th May, uh, the Ghana Tourism Authority, GTA, under the auspices of the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, issues the following guidelines for hospitality industry. All hotels can operate as normal and host their guests subject to specified elevated hygiene protocols and social distancing. Food chains and restaurants can operate sit down as well as pick up delivery services while observing appropriate social distancing and hygienic protocols. All nightclubs must remain closed. Drinking bars can operate while observing appropriate social distancing and hygiene. In all situations, hospitality facilities should observe the staff management and workplace protocols and precautionary measures on public gatherings with the view of achieving social distancing and hygiene protocols as spelt out in the imposition of restrictions uh, under the coronavirus uh, COVID-19 instrument of 2020. Uh, let's quickly uh, get to uh, Zoom right now and speak with the Akwesi Ajima, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Tourism Authority. He joins us now. Uh, good, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. So I need us to get some clarity on this uh, guidelines the authority is issuing. I know that there have been concerns over adherence of social distancing protocols across the general populace. How sure are we that uh, hospitality industry operators will act differently? Right, thank you. Uh, I believe so far since uh, we went into starting with the partial lockdown, when uh, uh, this started with the EI 64 coming into force somewhere around uh, mm. the end of March, uh, through when we had a partial lockdown with the EI 65, and then now we've been working very closely with uh, various associations in the hospitality industry. And they have comforted themselves. I mean, if you go to our uh, hotels, uh, restaurants, store bars, you see all the necessary PPEs in place. And so we are very clear that what they've done in the past, as a reference, will show that they will go by these guidelines. And these guidelines are also based on uh, the EI 64, which is in effect. And I believe it was important that we clarify what the restrictions are and which ones are exempt by what the law says so that people can go about their mm. uh, business uh, mm. without harassment. Mm. So, so let's take a look at uh a few of the guidelines. Uh, I want to focus on uh, drinking bars, for example. Uh, on the fourth item of the directives, uh, the guidelines, the authority says drinking bars can operate while observing appropriate social distancing and hygienic protocols. I mean, we know drinking bars and the chaos that sometimes erupts as a result of people consuming alcohol. Uh, beyond just giving these guidelines, are there support systems by the or from the Ghana Tourism Authority to ensure that these guidelines are adhered to? I'm particularly concerned about drinking bars. All right, I think uh, we have several types of drinking bars. You have the ones that are like your corner shop where uh, probably not even a seat for people to go and sit down. So they're very big ones. And that's why we had to pick a leave from some of the restrictions and put specific numbers that could be uh, uh, admitted. But let me put it in broader terms to... Uh, monitoring and who are the support mechanisms and what mechanisms are in place. We've been working very closely with the National COVID Tax Force that has the military, the Ghana Police Service, National Ghana Health Service, uh, NADMU, uh, FDA, NCA, and uh, several other agencies uh, uh, represented. And that task force has, on all occasions, implemented some of these directives that are issued by agencies. And so when the police go out, they know the directives that govern uh, hospitality sector. So the, the 
the guideline says, don't entertain, sit down. Then when they come there, they will refer you to the guideline that has been issued and then make sure that you don't entertain, sit down. If we say entertain, sit down, but give a one meter uh, distance, that is exactly what they will ensure uh, happens. We also have our inspectors. These are inspectors who do the inspection of facilities and they go around every day to monitor. And also we are plugged into the national database. So for example, over the weekend, we got calls from, from uh, some residents in uh, Jowlu that there was a hotel where there was a party going on. And so we immediately alerted uh, the national task force and they moved in. And so all these things are working together. All these groupings are working together. And that team will go on ground not just in Accra, in all our regions, also report into us, and then we send to the National Task Force for follow-up. And so we believe strongly that with these support mechanisms and with these structures that we have in place, we will be able to monitor and report into the National uh, Task Force for redress. Mm, so, so there are many who are of the view, sincerely, that the decision to open to this extent uh, borders on insensitivity and that possibly the authority may not have considered the fact that the numbers of COVID-19 are rising. When we had two cases and a few more hundreds, there was a lockdown. And now that we are inching towards 5,000, now there is, uh, you know, avenue for hotels to open, for drinking bars to open, for people to get around the same things they would do, which can actually uh, fuel the spread of coronavirus. So I want to ask you, why are you easing these restrictions? Is it for the benefit right. of these Thank businesses you. or is it for consideration of the overall health of the people who go there and drink, for example? Please, let me just clarify. And for the records, we are not easing any restrictions. We don't have that power. We are not easing anything. We are just interpreting what the law in reference to what the president said so that our operators understand what it means for their business mm. so we don't have that power we don't have that mandate our mandate is to interpret what the law says and then implement it and that's why we are implementing agents and so really what the president said was very clear that ei64 is being extended to may 31st and if you pick the ei64 there are two categories there's a restricting bits. There are places where it lists things that are restricted. Uh, public gatherings, churches, uh, drinking bars, hotels. It lists all of them. Then if you go to clause 4 in the EI 64, it then says, notwithstanding this imposition of restrictions and these categories, these particular areas are exempt. Hotels, restaurants. And if you take hotels, for example, during the quarantine period, most of the hotels became quarantined facilities. People were going there, the staff were there, but they managed to serve the guests who were on quarantine. We have in this country expatriates and people who are traveling into the country, working here, who stay in hotels permanently. And so to that extent, throughout the period, even when there was a partial lockdown with restrictions, we said the hotels could still serve the guests who were there. But if you take the EAI 64, it doesn't impose any new restrictions. It's what was imposed, I think, on the 23rd or so of March that we are just interpreting as guidelines for our players in the industry. So we haven't eased anything. All we have done is to say, yes, the law says you can operate, but you can operate within these rules, within these enhanced protocols. And some of the enhanced protocols, which are not necessarily in the EI-64, are, for example, the wearing of masks, uh, 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 the uh, wearing of masks and the provision of sanitizers and everything in your facility. But we came out with those administrative guidelines as support to ensure that the law, yes, is there, but people are doing the right thing. And so we are not, uh, uh, the, we don't have that power to ease any restriction. We are just interpreting what the law says. Right. And Is so that if the new EI comes, that says otherwise, we'll issue new directions. Right, uh, Mr. Ajimai, so we're far, grateful for your time. Thank you extremely. I'm Kusia Ajimai, CEO of the Ghana Tourism Authority. Grateful for joining us. Uh, this is still Midday Live from our studios at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. Up next is sports.
Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Sports on Media Live on TV3. My name is Yao Ofosulabi. Now, three Ghanaian internationals, Kudus Mohamed, Majida Shimeru, and Gideon Mensah, have underscored the importance of academy training in the growth of footballers. Now, speaking in an interview with Juliet Bilwa, the three said it offers an ideal foundation for excellence. All three players said it was a sure way to solidify young talents and get them grounded before the big break. Gideon Mensah and Majid Ashimeru, who both played for Wafa, re echoed this. In academy football, it's, it's really important for a young, a young, a young and upcoming I think, footballer, if I must say, especially in Ghana. So I think it's, it's, uh, it helps you to improve in, uh, in football and I mean, it's 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 much easier when you when you from academy to I mean to play in Europe. So, yeah, I think it's really important for a player in Ghana to I mean to be in an academy. I had the talent already before I went there, but then um, you know, there you have the you have the advanced coaches who, who are going to take you through your career and then going to take you through what you have to do and then what you don't need to do. I mean, and then um, with that, it helped me a lot when I came when I came to Europe because I there was some things that I don't I didn't need to go back and learn again because I had it already. From the academy, uh, playing academy have had uh, I mean had the most impact in my career now. A popularly held belief and view for proponent of the system is it is spoken of well by the players who also passed through it, such as Kudus Mohammed, who played for the Right to Dream Academy. Playing with European clubs and also experiencing the culture on, because obviously you want to come to Europe to come and play football. So there's a lot of stuff we want, we have to go and learn about so i think it's very important and vital we travel and play some of the clubs in europe and then see how it is to play out there so when you go there professionally you're already used to the, the stuff going on for young ghanaian players the opportunity to get academy training is a golden windfall never to miss while some choose other routes the verdict is out there Now let's move on to some stories right here on Media Live on uh, TV3. And Ghana Football Association President Keto Kriku says the Executive Council of the body is willing to grant Premier League clubs the rights to independently run their league. Now, the uh, president, who was part of administrators that attended the meeting of the Premier League representatives to elect members to serve on the Autonomous League Committee, has expressed his satisfaction to the process so far. Now, if it happens, it will be a campaign promise of his fulfilled. Now, the board has appointed Tobia Fede the 14th, Delali Senaya and John Ansan to work on a five-member body uh, to work on modalities for an independently run Ghana Premier League. Now, Ghanaian songstress Becca has released a new single titled Overcome to celebrate and recognize frontline workers and their input to fighting the novel coronavirus. The song is an avenue uh, to raise financial support towards the fight against the pandemic. Becca's Overcome, which is digital, is in recognition of the efforts of all frontline workers in the COVID-19 fight. The objective of the song is to motivate frontline workers such as the medics, security services, state agencies and decision makers to keep the fight. In a Skype interview on COVID-19 360 on TV3, the singer mentioned proceeds from the song will be going into the COVID-19 trust fund. As an artist, when I do a song, it's an opportunity for me to make some money and put it in the bank, the bank so that I can, I can spend. But this time, every single proceed coming off the song, whether it's YouTube or iTunes or every streaming and downloading platforms, this money is going to be put together and sent to the trust fund, which has been set aside by the government to, to help fight COVID-19. After revealing her plans to hang her musical boot of 13 years by the end of 2020 she also gave a hint on the release of her fourth studio album i'm actually working on my fourth studio album it's ready i rebecca champon will remain an artist until the 31st of december a recording artist until the 31st of december 2020 which means up until the 31st of december this year i will remain a recording artist Doctors, nurses, and pharmacists fighting. Shout out to the police, law enforcement. For
Right, uh, that's it for the entertainment news. And that's how we wrap up with the bulletin. I'm Stephen Enti. Thanks for your time. On behalf of the crew, good afternoon. There's more news at 3news.com.